Milby was a commercial mortgage-backed securities case, which means it was a pool of hundreds of loans on commercial properties. And the pool had not performed as well as expected. And when the servicer, who I worked for, uh, started examining the loans, they began to get the feeling that there were breaches of the reps and warranties, such as the loan to values were not as strong as they should have been. The debt service coverage ratio, in other words, what the borrower had left over in income to pay his mortgages, was not there. The underwriting appeared to have been shoddy. So the servicer filed this lawsuit originally as a class action, and we then got into all these procedural issues because this case was very early on in securitization litigation over breaches of reps and warranties. We had issues as to whether the trustee had to be named, whether the servicer could sue in the name of the trustee. We got motions to dismiss on all these little procedural issues, and then we got into the substantive issues of, well, material and adverse effect, okay. When does that get measured? What constitutes material and adverse effect? What, how much evidence did we need for material and adverse effect? Did we have to have an expert witness? Was it enough to say that the president of the company that was the BP's buyer said, I wouldn't have paid that much for those loans if I'd known all this. Was that sufficient? So we had all these different kinds of issues and we managed to survive the motion to dismiss on material and adverse effect, prompt notice, what is prompt notice, what triggers your duty to give notice. Uh, so we survived that, we ended up getting to a trial, choosing a jury, and then settling at that point. And, and I would say the other key thing that we learned when we were trying to, we were able to get loan files, but then you had to go through and see whether you actually had all of the documents you were supposed to have in the loan file, because you needed to review those to determine whether you had breaches of certain reps and warranties. And through that process, we learned that in fact they had breached another obligation in the contract to supply all the necessary documents to do a good job servicing. So we had all these kind of issues and whether that was material and adverse and whether we actually had a case, so it was, it was a lot of work to just get to trial. The mock juries were essential in this case because you learned what arguments seemed persuasive and what arguments seemed too technical and which arguments seemed in a gut way to tell you, oh yeah, that was really a fraud or that was a bad loan. You kind of get the reaction from the mock juries of what they understood and what they reacted to, and that's what you need. And you wanted that gut sort of reaction. Those guys lied, and that's what we were able to determine, I think.